Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Uh, well, in this video lecture, we are going to discuss the comparative statics of profit function using algebraic approach. For the sake of simplicity, uh, this time we will use a slightly different approach. Uh, that is, we will uh, assume that there is a finite number of buyers and sellers as opposed to the conditions for profit maximization where we are assuming infinite numbers of firms, buyers and sellers. So it means that profit function is not described by demand and supply functions in this case. So here we are assuming that we are having data for some, uh, some t observations, uh, some t observations and these observations are from 1 to uh, T. So we will carry out this analysis for one to T observations only. This is our entire data set. So it means that if you are taking price factor, price factor will contain these T observations. If you are taking the output factor, the output factor will contain these T observations. It means that these T possibilities only. So the price factor will be um, PT, right? And the output supply vector will be Y as a function of PT. And what is important to note that T takes zero from one to T only. Moreover, uh, we assume that this time we are not taking the production possibility set, which is given by this which contain all possible production plans right but the reason is we are taking only one to two production plans so that is why this is not we are not taking this one because it contains all possible production plans no further assume that if the firm is profit maximizing right at some price factor uh, if the net output is yt and this is the profit maximizing output of the firm at some price factor pt right now what is important to note that there are some other possible production plan as well and we can denote them by ys where is also takes value from 1 to t right so this is the optimal net output at pt right and what is important to note that ys are the other relevant production plans right but again i would repeat that these are not all the possible production plans rather we are taking the production plan plans from one to t so it means that we are assuming some of them and the first condition for necessary condition for the profit maximization will be pt yt right it is at least equal to uh, pt y s so what does this mean it means that uh, the profit maximization a p t uh, y t is at least equal to the profit maximization at the other production plan p t y s so it means that we know we don't know all the production possibilities set which are visible but we know some of them and some of them are from 1 to t so it means that if this is the optimal production uh, profit maximizing combination then in other words it means that the profit aid pt yt if this is the profit maximization production plan at this price uh, vector which contains all these uh, prices right so it will be at least equal to the price vector at the same price vector uh, and some other production possibility plan. So, this is the optimal one 
and these are not the optimal one then profit at this optimal level of production plan would be greater than profit at some other production plan which are not optimal and this condition is known as weak axiom of profit maximization weak axiom of profit maximization the weak axiom of profit maximization can also be shown by the help of the following diagram look at it all right you can see that the uh, this diagram contains two panel panel a and panel b and it contains only two observation that is phi 1 and phi 2 output has been shown on the vertical axis and it inputs are shown on the horizontal axis in both these panels uh, you can see input is taken on the negative dimension the reason is because it shows the vector of input right which shows payment to the factor of production or money outflow that's why it has been sh shown on the negative dimension uh, now you can see that uh, y1 is uh, less than y2 and similarly you can see that y1 is greater at least equal to y2 right so if you uh, multiply price factor on both sides that is p1 on both sides so you can see that profit at p1 y1 is not at least equal to uh, profit at p1 y2 right but here you can see that because y is greater than y2 is greater than y1 so this panel this diagram does not satisfy the weak axiom of profit maximization however if you multiply p1 prime on both sides in this panel you can see that y1 is greater is there it is greater or it is at least equal to y2 so it means that profit at p1 y1 is at least equal to profit at p1 y2 so here the weak axiom of profit maximization is uh, is satisfied this is because if p1 is the optimal choice optimal price factor right and y1 is the uh, production plan so according to the weak axiom p1 y1 must at least be as profitable as p1 y2 but this is not the case because of the output differential right but the, in this case you can see that y1 is greater than y2 because it lies above the y2 right so that's why this production this combination of price p1 and y1 is at least as profitable as p1 y2 so here the weak axiom of profit maximization is satisfied okay turn to our uh, this inequality again weak axiom of profit maximization is very simple and useful right uh, let us assume that there are two observation s and t right so these observations are uh, s and t if we apply weak, weak axiom of profit maximization by weak axiom of profit maximization p t y t must at least be as much profitable as p t y s because PT is product maximizing prices for YT output and PT is not profit maximizing prices for YS output. Similarly, PSYS is at least as much profitable as PSYT. The reason is PS is price maximizing vector for YS level of output and P is price factor is not profit maximizing uh, price factor for YT output. So that's why we are applying here the uh, weak axiom of profit maximization. Okay. So that's why if we shift into the left hand side and similarly if we also shift it to the left hand side we will get these inequalities. Right. We will get these inequalities. 
So if we, t, we take common PT from it, we will get YT minus YS. And similarly, if we rearrange it, we write this term at the start and this at the end. And then if we take minus p is common primate we will get yt minus ys we are doing this because we want to make this thing common between the two inequalities this thing and this thing right all right so if we add these two inequalities that is we add the left hand side and the right hand side in the left hand side we will get this term plus this term right and on the right hand side we will get 0 because we if we add 0 with 0 we will get 0 right so uh, now we can take this thing common because this term and this term is common between these two components so yt minus ys and here we are left with pt minus ps so this is the difference of output and this is the difference of price factors so ultimately we will get uh, this term this is equal to delta y into delta p is at least equal to zero and this shows the comparative statics of profit maximizing behavior uh, of a firm under perfect competition and it also reports the uh, comparative statics of the uh, profit maximizing firm under perfect competition now what is important to note that f delta p is a price factor something like this right something like this then the inequality implies that delta y must not be negative right and if the first price is the plus price is an output price then an increase in output price delta y will also increase however if the first price is an input price then it will be measured in negative numbers right and with the increase in the input price delta y will not increase rather it will decrease so this is all about the comparative statics of a profit maximizing firm under perfect competition thank you thanks for watching